Well, I'm Artifacts of Mars. And NASA reportedly, this is from BBC News, has a plan essentially to cool off, try to cool off the Yellowstone volcano. Now, what does this tell you? For one thing, it tells you that they are very worried about this. Because the plan could actually trigger an eruption. So in other words, if you ever seen the movie Crack in the World, it's a 1950s era movie. I think, actually, I think early 1960s. But anyway, they drilled out and they used a nuke to try to drill out magma and they wind up almost destroying the planet. But what NASA is planning on doing is basically pouring water on the fire. At least that's what they're saying. Uh, yeah, right. Lying beneath the tranquil settings of Yellowstone National Park in the U.S. lies an enormous magma chamber. It's responsible for the geysers and hot springs that define the area, but for scientists at NASA, or in other, in other words, NASA, never a straight answer, it's also one of the greatest natural threats in human civilization as we know it. Potential super volcano. Now, I thought we were told that this thing's stable and it's not going to blow its top. They're worried, folks. And right here's the proof. Following an article we published about super volcanoes last month, a group of NASA researchers got in touch to share a report previously unseen outside the space agency about threat and what can be done about it. As a member of the National NASA Advisory Council on Planetary Defense, which studied ways from NASA, NASA to defend the planet from asteroids and comets, explains Brian Wilcox of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory at California Institute of Technology. I came to the conclusion that during the study that the most super volcano threat is substantially greater than that of the asteroid or comet threat. They're worried, folks. They're big time worried. There are around 20 known super volcanoes on Earth, with major eruptions occurring on average once every 100,000 years. One of the greatest threats uh, an eruption may pose is thought to be starvation with a prolonged volcanic winter, potentially prohibiting civilization from having enough food for the current population. In 2012, the UN estimated that food reserves worldwide would last 74 days. Now, 20, vo 20 super volcanoes in 100,000 years, if they meant one of those erupts every we were to take an average on that every 5,000 years. I don't think that's what they meant. I think they mean that between them, they erupt every 100,000 years. Just wanted to clarify that. NASA scientists came to consider the problem. They found the most logical solution could simply be to cool a super volcano down. Oh, that's all. Volcano says the Yellowstone is essentially a gigantic heat generator, is equivalent to six industrial power plants. The Yellowstone currently leaks about 60 to 70 percent of the heat coming up from the blown into the atmosphere via water which seeps in the magma chamber near the cracks. The remainder builds up inside the magma, enabling it to dissolve more and more volatile gases in the surrounding rocks. Once the heat reaches a certain threshold, then an explosive eruption is inevitable. But if more of the heat could be extracted, then the super volcano would never erupt. Right. NASA estimates that a 35% heat transfer could be achieved from the magma chamber. It also no longer pose a threat. Right. The only question is how. One possibility is simply to increase the amount of water in the super volcano, but from Practical perspective, it would be impossible to convince politicians to sanction such an initiative. 
building big aqueduct uphill into the mountains region would be both costly and difficult. People don't want their water spent that way, Wilcox says. People are desperate for water all over the world, and so major infrastructure project when only water is used to cool down a super volcano will be very controversial. Instead, NASA has conceived a very different plan. They believe the most viable solution could be to drill up to 10 kilometers down into the super volcano and pump out water at high pressure. Pump down the water at high pressure. Circulating water will return to at a temperature of around 350 degrees Celsius, thus slowly day by day extracting heat from the volcano. And while projects become an estimated cost of about 3.46 billion, comes with an enticing catch, which could convince politicians to make an investment. It also currently leaks about 60 gigawatts of heat. Drilling this way, it could be used to create a geothermal plant which generates electric power at extremely competitive prices around 10 kilowatts, 10 cents per kilowatt hour. You have to give the geothermal companies incentives to drill somewhere deeper and hotter. water than they would usually would, but it would pay back their initial investment, getting electricity from part of the surrounding area for a period of potentially tens of thousands of years. But drilling a vol- super volcano does not come without certain risks, you think? Mainly triggering an eruption you're intending to prevent. The most important thing with this is no harm, Wilcox said. If you drill on the top of the magma chamber, try to cool from there, this would be very risky. This could make the cap over the magma chamber more brittle and prone to fracture. And you might release a trigger of harmful volatile gases in the magma at the top of the chamber, which would otherwise not be released. So, I'm going to boil this down. I'm not going to let this go much longer. Uh, they can blow, they can cause an eruption that they claim they want to prevent. They're doing something, at least they're not proposing use of nukes, like in uh, Crack of the World, but that's a movie that this reminds me of. But how they intend to drill down into there, I have no idea. This is scary stuff, folks. But what it illustrates is probably not going to go forward, but it illustrates that these people are scared out of their wits, or they wouldn't be talking about doing this. So stand by. That's all I can say. If that blows, it's uh, goodbye to the United States. I'm Artifacts of Mars. Thanks for watching.